Most Excel users just use the filter button when filtering data. But that can be a bit tedious with a lot of mouse clicks, especially when there's multiple criteria. So let me show you a better alternative called the dsum function with five real world examples. Let's get into it. In our first and simplest scenario with one criteria, you can see over here we have the Excel file with a table. So let's suppose that we want to filter by iPhone machines and we want the sum of the quantity column when that's matching. For this to use the filter tool, we can go over to sort and filter and click on the filter button. You'll notice this creates this drop down. We want to go under product. And more specifically, we're just going to select the iPhone 15. Press OK. Once filtered, just select this whole area and you'll notice down that it has the sum of 2892. That said, if we were to use the sum function, it doesn't give us the same answer. That's because it's also accounting for all of the different rows that have been hidden here. So because we've done this filter, we can only see the iPhone 15. But this sum function actually takes in all of the different rows, which isn't quite right. That's where the dsum can come handy. So here we'll do equals the dsum is the function we'll use. And the database is simply all of our data. That's simple enough. Comma D field is what we're looking to sum. So we're looking to sum the quantity and just select that from here and there only comma and the criteria is going to be the product and the iPhone 15. We want to select those two. So G7, G8 close the parentheses and hit enter. You can see it gets us the exact answer. That's the first example. But you might not be fully convinced about the dsum function. So let me show you where it works even better which is why there's a couple of criteria. Over here, you can see that we now have not just the iPhone 15 that we want to filter by, but also the country of France and the quantity greater than 500. Doing filters like before might be a bit too tricky, but you might think, hey, how about using the sum ifs function? That's definitely an option, but it's gonna be much harder than the D sum, which we'll see later. So we're summing all of the quantities, comma, and let's say the first criteria is that the products over here have to be equals to the iPhone team, comma. Then we move on to criteria range number to which is the country. So this country area down over here should be equals to the country of France, comma. And the third one is that the quantity. So this same quantity column has to be and select that greater than 500, close the parentheses and hit enter. So that's the answer we get. And now let's see if we can do it even more easily with the dsum. That's just going to be the sum. Hit the tab key there. Database again. It's just the whole table comma. The field is simply the quantity that's overlooking the sum and the criteria. We don't need to go one by one like the sum ifs. We can just select all three criteria at once and you'll notice we get the exact same answer. And if for some reason we want to remove one of the criterias, we don't actually need to change. So let's suppose we want to delete this area over here. You know this for the dsum. All we need to do is just change this criteria range and bring it one back. Whereas for the sum if it's a bit trickier because we need to leave all of this very last area. So this one over here as well as the final criteria like that and get the same answer. Hopefully you can start to see how the dsum function is quite powerful. And now let's take a look at it with an or condition. So over here, you can see that we now not only have the same filter as before, but we also have some other ones which write down here. So whether it be in France or in Spain or in Belgium under these criteria amounts, then we want to be able to add this to sum for them. So again, it's just going to be equals to D sum. Again, just the entire table comma. The field is we're looking to some quantity. So we'll select that. And as a criteria before, we would only select this first part. But now what we need to do is just make it a bit longer and we're going to get the correct answer. But reading the formula, even though we have a lot more criteria, doesn't actually get any harder. At this point, you might be wondering, does the DSUM work with ranges? For example, within the one week period, what was the sum of quantity? And we will calculate that range. Before we look at that, if you like my teaching style and want to learn more Excel, do subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time. All right. We are now looking at filtering between ranges with the dsum function. Over here, you can see that we have a start date of the 10th of February and an end date of the 15th of February. So if the product is the iPhone 15 and it's in France within this time period, 
then we want to include the sum of quantity. So we can use equals to sum again in the tab key. This is our entire database and the field is a quantity again. And all we need to do now is select all of the different criteria, including the two dates, close the parentheses and hit enter. It's simple. In fact, if we take a look over here, it's really only matching the specific one, which is the 855. That said, let's suppose that we add a new row. I'm just going to copy paste it down over here. Let me change the number to 1500 and see what happens. You can see that because we're using a table here on the left side, you can do that simply by pressing Ctrl T. It's able to account for any additional row entries within this dsum function. Before we take a look at some of the important limitations of the dsum function, let's look at the sister functions, which are other database functions like the average or the count. Over here, you can see we have a similar table set up and for the D average, simply the average. You can guess roughly what it's going to do within a certain set of filtered data and it's going to find the average. So this is our data, comma. The field is going to be the quantity that we're still looking at, but it's still the sum. We want the average. And finally, the criteria is all of this range over here. You can see that seems to be working correctly and the D count works in a very similar way. So we're just going to select the same area, comma. The field is a quantity and we want all of these past the criteria. So we have a count of two. What's awesome about these database functions is that they're all structured very similarly. So if you understand one, you're going to be able to understand the whole range. But it is important to mention some of the limitations. So let's take a look over here in Excel. And then one that I've noticed here in this table is that the headers choose product and country for the filter headers. Much the headers that we've got over here. Instead of product, let's call this the phone. You know, as soon as I do that, the D sum is no longer working. The same thing goes over with the country. If I call it Europe and France in it, it no longer works because it can't find that relevant match. Similarly, if we change the structure here, so maybe I've got the product on this side, the country over here, and then I've got the iPhone 15 here, and I've got the country of France. If we try to do the sum, let's see what happens. So equals D sum. This is our whole database comma and we really have the same data. So let's see if it works. This is the quantity. And now for the criteria, select it this way, close and hit enter. You notice that it doesn't work like that. So the filters have to be laid out horizontally. One final limitation that's worth mentioning is that it only works if your data is right next to each other. So in this D sum over here, let me switch it up and bring it back to the top where it was working properly. I'm going to change the iPhone 15 in front to one row lower. Notice that it now no longer works properly. As you can already select these parts separately, you need to select them all at once. And right now, since it's getting this little area that's empty, that's the overview of the dsum function. But one key database function we haven't covered is dget, which you can learn from my videos or playlist. That's all for today. Do subscribe and I will see you in next one.